On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're composing horror music that gets right under your skin. Tomorrow is Halloween 2020, and a full moon no less. What a perfect time to be talking about composing horror music, and specifically, one of my favorite side projects that I've ever been a part of, a project called Scaremeister. This is a collaboration between myself, Kevin Key of Skinny Puppy, and my humble brother, Traz Damji. Scaremeister officially got off the ground over a decade ago when a prominent LA company commissioned us to put together a collection of horror music for the film trailer business. At that time, there wasn't a lot available in the horror genre. So for today's session, I've restored one of my favorite tracks off the first volume we did, 31 Spirits. This song is called Personal Demons, and it's an absolute creep show. Check it. That was one of 31 different cues that we included on that first volume release. And at this stage, Traz had not officially joined the project. So this is a collaboration between Kevin and myself. And what a primo example this is of exactly how Kevin and I got up to working together on this project. Kevin almost daily would send me some musical idea, something that he put together in his own studio. Really simple and straightforward idea. And just like any collaborative project, some of those ideas, oh man, I'd put them up in my studio and just get totally inspired and run with them, right? This is a great example of one of those tracks. Let's have a listen to the two tracks that Kevin sent me before I started working on this song. This was like my daily from Kevin, and you can imagine how excited I got when I heard this crazy track. Check this. <laughs> Classic example of some of the tones that Kevin gets up to in his own studio. Tones that I've just never heard before. And that's one of the things that I've always loved about collaborating with Kevin. Just always generating sounds that don't come from a library, right? Very typically, and as was the case here, I'll go through those two tracks very, very carefully, looking for just the right combination of melodic and rhythmic ideas. Ideas that I can put together and start to structure and arrange into a bed track. Something that I can start to develop. So here's the simple arrangement that I came up with using those source tracks that Kevin supplied. Now I've got a solid arrangement that I can start working with, utilizing 
all of my favorite parts of these source tracks that Kevin supplied, I literally went in and just reinforced this whole section. I found a string line, a really solid bass note, and a high string sound that I put into an amp farm, like, a, like an amp sim. Really, really cool. Check it. And off the top of this track, as I often do, I just sort of threw in some sound design elements to give it a bit of an intro, so to speak. It does a really good job of setting up this cue and notice that when I do something like that, I go into a song and I add some sound design elements right off the top. My goal is to always give that end user a clean alternate. In other words, right on the start of bar five is a good place to start this cue if you don't want that kind of sound design element off the top. Check it. So you just have a clean start, right? If I go back to bar one, I've got my whole intro. If I just go straight to bar five, This leads right into what I like to call the B section of this cue. You know, when I'm producing cues that are going to be part of a library and that are going to go out there and generate potential licenses, every time my goal is to create each and every one of those cues with two distinct musical sections. In other words, you know, we've already set this awesome track up. It's almost like a hybrid between an orchestra and some kind of weird wall of synth or something, right? Well, where do you go next with this track, right? Generally, I try and take the cue to a new place. Let's check out where I took this cue. my own experience, this can literally double your chances of drawing a license from any given library. Not only that, I love writing cues like this. It's just something to be said about, you know, opening up the scene and getting that person's emotions drawn into a certain area and then just left turn, you know, introduce radical new sounds or new tempo or new feel, something to take that person's emotions and just twist them, right? It's the whole idea behind composing horror music. How do you get under people's skin? More often than not, it's a bunch of weird sounds and left turns. I love doing left turns. And when we're sound designing inside of Pro Tools or any other DAW, let's not forget half speed playback. Total grottiness. I love that sound. You know, this little break does such a good job of setting up the B section of this cue. You know, just like so many film trailers, the goal is to just create angst, right? I want that listener to be sort of right on the edge of their seat, trying to get under their skin before the big crescendo of this piece. You know, things like a distorted guitar pitch bending all the way through the end of this track. There's nothing musical sounding about that thing. It sounds foul. To my ear, it sounds wrong, but 
perfectly wrong. Check it. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for sitting in on today's session, and I hope this inspires you to compose some extra creepy horror music this Halloween on a full moon.